Okay, so for question six, three ropes pull on a knot as shown in figure 3.6a. So we're going to describe that figure, we're going to draw it out for us. We've got our axes. You're going to have to forgive slightly that my lines don't always end up straight, but we'll get the general idea. You can refer to the book for a much, much better drawing than the one that I'm giving. Anyway, we've got a particle here with three ropes pulling on it. The particle is labelled K and so we have three ropes. as drawn like this. This one's T2 and this is T3. Now the crucial point you can see here is that this one terminates with an arrow. We've got a distinct size of T1. Whereas T3 and T2, they fade out. So they've not given us all uh, the correct scaling of these arrows. We've got to do a bit of figuring out for ourselves. So the question asks us to use qualitative reasoning. That is no math to determine the magnitudes and forces that ropes two and three exert on the knot and explain in words how we arrive at the problem. So the problem is this is qualitative and so we've got to discuss but there are lots of ways that we can determine our solution. One thing is that we've got a 53 degree angle here and if you watch my videos on questions four and five you'll notice that this 53 degree angle or very roughly there is of quite a bit of use to us. Now, I don't know whether this is the qualitative reasoning that they're looking for. It's, it's sort of a memory test. But if we've got a correct size of T1 being 400, and we recognize that we've got a Pythagorean triple of 3, 4, and 5, that 400 very much implies that the horizontal will be 300, and that T2, or the hypotenuse of this fictional triangle, if we just rearranged everything, would be 500. And that's to balance out. So essentially, just to describe that, we'd have the idea that this 400, if we sum the two components like this, would give us two forces that would have to balance in opposite directions like that. The crucial point is, of course, that the knot is not accelerating. And so forces all have to be balanced. We could also look at the grid lines that are given here but because the um uh, this is all in the book but because the forces fade out we're not 100 percent that we can trust these because we don't know exactly where the grid lines terminate so the key information for the qualitative description is that we've got 53 degrees here which signifies we've got our 345 pythagorean triple therefore with a length of 400 down we'd have 300 across And then combining these, we get a hypotenuse of 500, which in this direction shows us we've also got 53 here. And these two forces, T2, must balance out the components combined of T1 and T3. So, just to summarize, T2 would have a 500, that says 300, I wrote the wrong one, 500 Newton force attributed to it, and T3 would have a 300 Newton force attributed to it. This is the qualitative way of doing it. Of course, we can do it quantitatively, quantitatively, but that's the next question. And so I will answer that in question seven as to how you do it with math.